Good morning, folks. We'll watch a dimmed X-ray view of our star in 131 angstroms. Brightness here comes from the coronal interaction of plasma around the periphery and the umbral magnetic fields at the sunspot groups. Today we're going to look at some super cool science. Last night we put out a special video and you should not miss it if you haven't seen it. Some advanced concepts relating to the world turning over. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last 24 hours on our star brings the southern and northern coronal hole extensions into central heliographic longitudes. The bright active regions on the north get active as they interact with the nearby filaments if we can recall yesterday morning's stellar interaction coverage. Those filaments remain stable but you should recognize their grander size from only a few months ago. That will continue through sunspot maximum. By the way, this grainy eclipse you see is the Earth. We are entering SDO eclipse season soon where every number of satellite orbits it passes behind the Earth from the Sun's perspective. It peaks around 72 minutes of eclipse near the equinox when we'll have to rely on other satellites to complement the SDO. The fuzzy outline of the eclipse is due to Earth's atmosphere. New videos of sunspots attached to the sunspot paper in today's link list. They are showing what they call evidence of ubiquitous magnetic reconnection and as long as we're going with Alphane's idea about current sheets and the mainstream at least recognizes that frozen in field lines are violated as we discussed a few days ago, I'm okay with it. Especially because it essentially confirms the papers describing electrical triggering of solar flares. We've identified these over the last five years or so as the future of sunspot science. Now. They have close-up views to prove it. Up next is a star system that's almost as cool as the aligning six planets we discussed only two days ago. Not only do they spot a six-star system, but every one of those stars eclipses. In reality, the end result of this system is likely that one or more will be ejected. Some will ramp up or wind down or steal from their binary and eventually will have gas giant planets and only one or two stars. Well, folks, this is an example of super complex math used on a brick wall. The most stringent dark matter size bounds yet, but the problem is, they did it for wimps. The dark matter particle on the chopping block, which over half of the field has already abandoned in favor of axions, and which doesn't exist. Indeed, they got closer to seeing the door shut completely. But when we see their bounds for axions, the also imaginary new girlfriend of cosmology, Adding 18 zeros to a spread of potential answers is obviously not the tight bounds they boast about in the title. Interesting work here on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. They say the ocean spreading there is actually due to huge upwellings from the deep below, not just nearer to the surface. These processes cross mantle boundaries that ought not be crossed. They are directly tied to the splitting crust above. Last but not least, we see beautiful recurrent nova with the central star still shining brightly and it inspires a review. They believe it's a long period classical nova, the product of a binary sucking material off its sister star for eons and then exploding off an accumulated hour layer, ready to go again. A few such binaries have been identified, more so for the bigger supernova versions of this, and indeed, there is nothing but theory to suggest many of these indeed have a binary at all. They say here that they are just in too close for you to see from this distance and sure, that's possible. But remember, we have seen the degenerate binary mathematics questioned. They have found such events with no binary, and even one from a poor little star that wandered into a dust cloud and shook off its accumulation. The truth is that any such interaction at that level where accumulation of material or electromagnetic processes can be disrupted is capable of producing the outburst, just like the interactions between filaments and sunspots do at the smaller scale. Reconnection. Both their version and Alphane's is an interaction event, like getting hit by the galactic current sheet. We greatly appreciate your support. Shout out to CustomSmithMFG.com for supporting Observer Ranch and choosing the shout out donation reward. Second Amendment fans, patriots, and the like, you'll enjoy. Rewards at ObserverRanch.com range from these new shout outs to a week at the ranch to permanent commemoration and thanks for your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.